Hey guys, what's up? Evan from Stock Music Musician, and this is the first video in a series of videos that are really going to be a very introductory look at Reason. Uh, basically, Reason 8, 9, and 10. I'm making this right now as Reason 10 is just about released, but it will also more or less apply to previous versions of Reason. Um, so in this first video, what we're going to do is we're just going to very, uh, very, like, cover the main interface of Reason from a very high level um, and focus sort of on just navigating the software and getting it to work for you, getting set up, all of that. Then in subsequent videos, we're sort of, sort of dig into the interface in more detail, focusing on Reason's mixer, its rack, and its sequencer, and then also sort of on the different instruments and effects and things like that. Um, so let's get started. This here is the main Reason panel that might show up when you start Reason. And you'll notice there's basically four sections here. You've got the mixer, and it says mixer although it doesn't view very well like this. You've got the rack, which is where you'll have your instruments and your effects. And then down here, you've got the sequencer, uh, which is where you'll actually be able to record and view the temporal aspects of your recording um, and also monitor some aspects of it. Um, then on the left, you have the browser. And on the bottom here, you have sort of the transport control. Um, so you can resize any of these windows by dragging them around or you can double click on or just single click on any of these to shrink them um, out of view. Also another way that you can navigate this and this is how I actually prefer to do it is go to the window and say detach main mixer and attach rack window and so now you have three separate windows here. Um, uh, um, that's not what I meant to do. <laughs> uh, you've got three main windows here, your mixer, your racks, and your sequencer, and you can hit F5, F6, and F7 to go to them respectively, or you can set that up on your keyboard or your mouse, or you can hit Alt-Tab, um, a bunch of different ways of going back and forth between them. And if you have a multiple pull monitor setup and you can drag them on to different multiple uh, different monitors. I've seen a lot of people have really good success with actually taking a monitor and flipping it from portrait mode to landscape mode and then putting their rack browser in it sort of um, it ends up looking kind of narrow like this and you'll have all the instruments just right there easily uh, scrolled down. So that's the first part, just like that there are these four different windows. Uh, well, there's three different major windows, the rack, the transport, and the mixer. And then the browser you can use in some of the windows, but not in others. And the transport you can use in some of the windows, but not the others. So, um, we'll, and we'll get into those in future videos. But um, let's start out, if you hit F5, it brings you to the mixer. Um, what I want to point out on the mixer, just from a high level, is that um, this is basically, it starts out with just your master channel here on the right, and then if, as you create instruments, and don't worry about this because we'll get into this in depth, then it actually creates full-on mixer channels here, and you can see on the right you sort of have a mini representation of it over here. And this is just like a, a digital representation of an actual honest-to-goodness mixer that you might see at a club or in a PA system. Um, so that's what this thing, this view is about. And this is about setting your levels, doing some EQ, using effects sends, um, and it's sort of modeled on an SSL compressor. I mean, an SSL console. Um, so now if you go to the next window, that's part of it, um, you get to the rack section. And you can sort of think of this as like hardware synthesis, um, modular synthesis, where what you could do, we'll use the browser here actually. Um, no, we won't do it. We'll get to the browser in a second. So you would create 
um, a reason device. So we'll do a subtractor, which is one of the classic instruments in reason. So you've got the instrument here, you've got all the different ways that you can edit it, just like you would in a regular, real, honest to goodness piece of hardware. But then there are also effects that you can insert into it by going to show insert effects. And then you can right click or you can drag from the browser and we could do an effect like a delay, for example. Um, we'll just go to reason the echo. And so now the way the signal path would work is it would go from the instrument into this insert effect and then it would go out to the mixer. Well, it all sort of be going through the mixer. No, ac yeah, no, it all occurs in here and then it goes to the mixer, although you can change that to be as accurate as possible. Um, and then you could have a second instrument or a second effect. That's a better way. Like the scream distortion. So right now it would first go to the echo, then it would go to the scream distortion. Um, but let's say you actually want it to go to the distortion first and then the echo. Well, you've got a few ways of doing that, but if you hold shift and raise it above it, um, and we'll get into all this in detail, but this changes the um, order that the song sounds are processed in. And if you just drag them without holding shift, it doesn't. Um, then you can also go to the browser and click here on effects, and we could also add a guitar amp at the end. And you can drag in anything, and then there's presets here in the browser that you could drop in. And you could also drop in, if you click on the folder icon on any of these, it opens up the patches here in the browser. And you have the option to search. You can make your own files. Uh, it's incredibly important to stay organized. The more tracks you get, the more samples you get. So um, this here is basically how you organize and how you view your files. Um, and you can create your own favorite lists and put things in there if you want. Um, so that's half of the rack, but, and again, there's gonna be a whole video on the rack, but if you hit the tab key, and I don't wanna overwhelm you, but if you hit the tab key, then it takes you to the back side of the instruments where you can basically draw in patch cables, just like you would with a guitar pedal almost, right? You can patch your various guitar pedals together to have them affect each other, and you can send signals from one to the other. Uh, you can also do that with CV controllers, which are basically, in the simplest level, just think about it as um, basically saying you want to associate um, one signal's sort of data output with another say, signal's data input um, and create a relationship between the two of those. So like one, one track might be going beep, 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 and you want another track to respond to that beep, 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 for example, by turning up the distortion on a, uh, on a distortion effect every time the bass hits really loud. That's just something off the top of my head. So you hit the tab button to go to the back. Um, I'm now going to, well, we'll keep this for one second. And then if you hit F7, this takes you to the sequencer, and this is basically where you would record. If you had recorded information, it would all show up right here. And I'll open a quick video or a quick track just to show you that. So um, you can organize parts of the song along the top. You can see here you've got audio data and um, it actually doesn't look like this song has MIDI data on it, but if you had a MIDI channel, it would appear in these tracks as well. And then you've got automation for your instruments, which we'll get into, uh, which appears here like this. Um, and also, this is where you're allowed to do uh, selecting. You can select, select sections and move them with the uh, this cursor. You can draw in new sections and automation with the pencil. You can cut things up with the razor. You can mute sections with the mute key. And these are all um, basically QWERTY. So, well, learn your hotkeys somewhere else. Let's not go too deep. You can zoom in um, and out. And you can just se select 
sort of dragging by hand. Um, and so you can zoom out. Here's the zoom out, zoom in. And again, we'll get this to this later um, in a separate video. But basically, this is where you have all of your data, your track information. This is how you can sort of monitor. There's a tuner here that you can see easily. And you can mute solo. You've got the ability to monitor tracks live. You have this in other views as well, but it's not perfectly synced which is a whole different story that we'll get into later. And you can also access the browser here as well. Um, finally, you've got the transport, which is down here at the bottom and is viewable in sequencer mode and in rack mode, but not in mixer mode for whatever reason. Again, reason's a great piece of software, but there are some things that bother me. Um, so. In this video, we actually will get into the transport a bit. So keys, if you want to control an instrument with your keyboard, you can hit keys or you can hit F4. And this brings up the ability basically to hit down A and an A key. And the A sound of a synthesizer would come through. Or if you hit down A, D, and G, you'd have a C major. Um, or you can do it with the mouse, repeat, hold. You can set which octave you're in. Um, then there's a section for the groove mixer, which we're not going to get into right now. We will probably never get into because I've never really used it that much. So uh, if you want to know more about that, look at other people's videos. A lot of people do like it. It's never been my thing. Then here is the ability to record, to quantize while you record. And that basically means you can control whether or not you want reason to automatically align your playing to a grid. Um, and I'm just going to stop real quick and say, um, if you're enjoying this video, please consider checking out the Patreon channel that I have. Um, it's got a lot of in-depth information on reason, and it's really a way of showing your appreciation for the channel and for what I'm doing here. Um, and basically, I'm taking all the money I get through Patreon and reinvesting it in this channel uh, in better software, uh, hopefully in editing some of these videos more professionally, and then also just in making exclusive content patches, that sort of thing. Um, so please check that out if you're enjoying this video. All right, so we've got the quantize record and you can choose which type of quantize, quantization you want to use. Then if you've got an external piece of hardware, here you've got the sync mode, um, and then here you've got, this is basically where you are in the song. Um, you'll notice this here, this line here is basically the playback head. And so you can either go directly to this 15th bar, fourth measure, or you can go there based on time. Here you can uh, turn on the click track while you record and the pre-count. Um, and then this here controls the volume of the click and the pre-count. You set the tempo here and the time signature here. This is backwards and fast forward just a little bit. Or if you um, want to go all the way back, you can hit stop and double stop will take you all the way back. Play, record. Dub lets you record over the current track where alt basically creates a new track in a new lane with all the settings you had previously on your track and mutes out the previous one. So if basically if you want to do alternate takes, you record the song, you're pretty happy with it, but don't love everything about it. Uh, hit Alt, quickly get a new track, keep going and stitch them together. This here is enables loop play and it will loop the song between the L flag and the R flag, um, which is really helpful if you're doing if you just want to get like one part of a song down, whether mixing or whether performing. Um, and this here is the left indicator, the left flag, and this is the art right flag. And you can either drag them around up here or manually over here. Um, then this sort of tells you a few important pieces of information, whether you're using an authorized version, whether you're having disk problems, which means you might want to get an SSD and whether you're having um, sort of, we'll get into automation, but whether or not automation is actually playing or whether you're overriding it with the actual hardware device or with by controlling an automation 
some way different than the note information already recorded. Um, then you have the calculator, this thing here, which spins when you're doing uh, complex audio rendering tasks like bouncing or um, creating samples within your program or exporting. Um, and that'll take a while to fill up, but a different dialog box will also show up. Then you've got the DSP, which shows how much of your uh, processor is being used. And this really is processor more than anything. It doesn't have too much to do with RAM. It doesn't have really anything to do with your hard drive, although they will improve performance. This is processor use. Then here you've got a small thing showing your overall input and the overall output. Uh, nothing's playing right now, so nothing's on the output. And then you have the ability to enable delay compensation or not. Um, and so sometimes when you have multiple effects on channels, on parallel channels specifically, um, there can be a phase delay between them. This is sort of advanced stuff. You don't need to worry about it right now. Uh, the big thing I would just say is if you're in the recording stage of your song, turn it off because it uses up a lot of processing power. And then when you're in the mixing stage, turn it on because you don't need as much speed. Um, I've made a series of videos about how to uh, get the best performance and reason, and I'll put a link down to them below, um, and this is part of it. And finally, here is the logo for dropping to Ali Hoopa, which is Propeller Head's proprietary online sharing site, if that's what you want to do with it. Um, so that's a very high-level overview of what goes on in Reason, and it is... <laughs> It's a lot to wrap your head around. I've been using it for about 15 years, so I'm pretty familiar, and I hope I didn't go too fast. But if I did, please let me know. Again, there will be videos that actually go into detail about the mixer, the transport, and the rack section. Not the transport. This was sort of in-depth on the transport, the mixer, uh, and the sequencer. Um, so I'll get into those issues there, um, and also with CV and all of that. But I hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, please give us a like and a subscribe and consider supporting the channel on Patreon.